So I'm working on a 2D RAS model here, and as you can see, it is not super stable. Um, I'm going to the max iterations at pretty much every time step, and we're going to have to troubleshoot this model a little bit. And there are a number of helpful tools that can help us troubleshoot that this model that have been added to the latest version of RAS. So let's go over to Mapper and take a look at them. But before we go over there, I'm going to pause this model and take a look at you know what are some of the uh, cells that are actually causing us the most trouble. You can see that this like 772829 region is causing us trouble. So let's go over to the results and take a look at that. And so here we are back over in RAS Mapper and here we're looking at the result. And the first thing we can do is to kind of turn on the velocity and see you know, what's, uh, what's this model doing. And this model is actually going through a series of gates here. It's a detention basin. And uh, we've got pretty high velocities, both upstream and downstream. Not, not surprising that we're having some stability problems right out of the gate. Um, but the, you know, the first thing that we can do here is we can actually go look at the cell that is causing us trouble. And the kind of the easiest way to do that is to go here and click on the 2D flow area, then press Control F. And Control F um, is kind of a new feature in Mapper. Uh, you can find almost anything with Control F, depending on what you click on over here. But here, it, it, you. Press Control F and you can get the cell, the face, or the face point. And if we recall, you know, what was giving us trouble? Well, it was cell 7728 and 7729. So I'm going to come over here and type those in and press the arrow button, and it'll take us right to 728 or 7729. And you can see that you know these are the cells that are pretty much surrounding this rapid flow of the gates, which is not surprising. Okay, so that tells us kind of what is happening at an independent time step. But one of the problems with this output is that it only actually tells us the cell with the maximum error. There could actually be a number of cells that are problematic and they're being masked by this one cell. You could go through and kind of maybe look and create a list, but that's pretty tedious. And so what the RAS team has actually done is they've added coverage, there's different layers that can help you identify which cells are giving you problem at kind of the model scale. And so let's go take a look at those because those are really helpful. So we right click on the result and go to create a new results map. You know, just like you were going to add shear stress or you know, new velocity field or something like that. And you come here under additional 2D variables. This is where the magic is. This is where you can select cumulative iterations, which will tell you the number of times that you exceed that 20 iterations at each cell, um, and then maximum water surface error. And so I'll just add those both. I'll add them one at a time. And so now I have these two options over here. And so now if I turn off the velocity, you can see that I have this cumulative iterations. And this maps by default from 0 to 1. And so, you know, if it goes more than one, you know that that's actually not as helpful as it could be. So let's right click on that and go to layers. And actually, let's say, let's go to, from zero to 100 and create a ramp. OK. And what you can s immediately see is that actually it is really right through this structure. If I turn on the I have this 2D. I have this 2D connection, this internal connection, which is essentially my spillway with these gates in it. And you can see that actually the iterations are lining up with the flow through those gates pretty well. And you, if you hover over them, you can see that you know, right where the flow is happening through the gates, that's really where I'm having the trouble. You know, I'm going to 400 iterations there. That, that, that's, that's problematic. But you can also see other places where this is problematic, where I have large um, slope changes, or if you go upstream to the boundary condition, um, we've got some issues at the boundary condition. This is a good way of kind of overviewing, even if like these cells don't emerge as the maximum cell ever, they are going to maximum iterations, and you can come up with a relative differentiation of which ones are problematic. The other really helpful thing is the maximum water surface. The maximum water surface error tells you exactly that. Like, um, throughout the model, what was the biggest water surface error that was computed at the cell? And if it's like smaller than 0 0.01, well, then it didn't even register. And, you know, we consider that convergence. But anything greater than that, you know, the model will keep a memory of that. Okay, so 
those are just a couple of new layers that we put in RAS that can help you troubleshoot the model kind of at the like whole model scale and help you identify regions or cells that are problematic without kind of fixing one, rerunning it, and then seeing the error message again. Uh, my name is Stanford Gibson. I am the sediment transport specialist on the RAS team. And this, and this video was funded by the HHNC SET program.